What's going on you the tube? I am Hot Mess Ness anyway, otherwise known as Vanessa. We are barefaced today. Um, so today is messy masking. It's where we try out a mask, whether it be new or old, we can talk about the mask or whatever, but I'm gonna mask and I'm gonna chit chat with you guys about some either topics within the YouTube community or even topics that I've just been thinking about in general. So today's mask is going to be, spoiler, spoiler, let's put it back in the box. Let's hold it up all pretty like, okay? okay. It is the Jouer Essential Hydrating Clay Mask. It's dual action detox and replenish. It's got hyaluronic acid, kaolin, vitamins E and A. The reason why I picked up this mask is because it's a non-drying, it doesn't dry down. A lot of times I find that the clay masks when I wanna pull stuff out of my skin are just too damn drying. And it also comes with you know the little spatula side that you can pull out product and then the little smoother do, silicone. Love that, it's got, you're supposed to use it one to two times a week. Apply generously to clean face, avoiding eye and lip area. Leave on for five to 10 minutes and remove with the special damp cloth they sent me. So I'm excited about that. Um, let's, just, let's just put this thing on. I'll throw the ingredients up here for you guys. It feels like there's, there's a lot of product in here. 51 grams, 1.8 ounces. So yeah, well, I already took the lid off and uh, I'm already dropping it everywhere. So this is what the mask looks like. It smells clean, like a, Good skincare. So we're gonna put it on. Is that what you're supposed to do? I don't know. We're just we're gonna scoop, scoop and smooth. So I have been trying to catch up on filming, not catch up, but get as much in as I possibly can. Um, again, I've got a little patch right here that I just can't get to go away. I don't know what it is. They're not little zits. Penny, what is on my face? How come I have a little patch there? It's not like it has just been there. It kind of came and I can't get rid of it. I don't know. I don't know what it is. So, um, I have been trying to film as many, you know, videos as possible. So that way, like I'm on top of the game. So that way I'm, you know, putting out content about every other day and I'm loving it, but I hit a point where all of a sudden I felt this kind of like sadness and I, I don't know how to explain it. I think if you're a, a fellow YouTube creator, you'll get it, especially if you're a smaller channel because when you put out content, you want people to watch it and you would like to grow and it's not all about you know, oh, I want to be a famous YouTuber. I want to make money off of this. It's like you're, you create something, you want someone to see it. Like if you're an artist, if you paint, you, you want your art to be seen. If you're an actor and you do plays or a movie, you want your stuff to be seen. You don't do a monologue alone in your room, feel brilliant, clap yourself on the back and be like, oh, I'm a prolific actor. Kind of the same thing goes with this. And I guess what I've been feeling lately is like, do I belong? Do I belong on YouTube? Because before I thought, you know, I, I don't upload enough. Uh, my quality isn't as good as it should be. All of those kind of things. And I think even if I went out and got the very best camera, the very best editing, software, everything, not a lot of that would change. I mean, it is nice to watch people on YouTube that have really nice quality when it comes down to reviews and stuff like that, but really it comes down to trusting a person when it comes to reviews, right? If you trust them, that's the review you wanna see. I'm just trying to even this thing out. So I've hit this point quite a few times. Now, this isn't me saying, I have a little zit right here, so let's see if we can get it in the airline. I've hit this point quite a few times in my YouTube journey. And it's not about, again, trying to all of a sudden overnight become something 
or anything like that. You just want to feel like you're doing it right or that you belong or that you're appreciated. I don't, appreciation isn't the right word, but that you belong in the YouTube beauty community. Like there are times I feel like maybe I'm just not in the right age range. And then yet you see certain people just fit right in. They start making videos and then they really start growing. And you're like, yeah. For example, Penny, Penn Smith Skincare. She hit the nail on the head. She comes in with all of her education when it comes to uh, skincare and product knowledge. And you just, I know I love her videos. And uh, she always puts out like the very best things. Like if she says something's good, I usually end up loving it. So sometimes you look in the mirror and you're like, am I doing this wrong? Am I, should I be having a channel about something else completely? I don't even know. But I know that the people that watch me say that they like, that I'm real and authentic and relatable. So I always want to keep that side, but I've just been kind of feeling, mm. so I, especially this week. And I really should just focus on, I like making content, make content, love it. Love when I see you guys comment, love when you guys are telling me what you want to see, what you don't want to see. And really just as much of, as anything, it's the community aspect that I love so much. I spend more time in my comments or even on Instagram if someone sends me a DM or even on Snapchat asking about a product, showing how to work products and then you get to know people and really have become my friends. I, I literally have like one good girlfriend and, and that's by choice. That's because I have five kids and if you want to be good in relationships, you have to be willing to give. And I can't always give all of my time to another person when I have such a large family, right? So I'm, I'm not wah-wah. It's just how I've been feeling. So I don't feel like having a YouTube break is what I need. I just feel like I need to get back to film because I love it and just let it go. Like you create and let it go off into the world. And if it's received, it's received. If it's not, it's not. But at the end of the day, you always wonder, am, am I doing this right? Is this okay? Um, what's been helping me a lot? Because in my past, I have struggled. This all comes full circle too, by the way. Um, but in my past, I've struggled with anxiety and depression and all of those kind of things. And I find that the thing that's helping me and where I've been at my happiest in the last few months is like discovering meditation. I was doing the Oprah 21 days on gratitude, being grateful. And it should have been a really, really hard time for me because my boyfriend was in the hospital and um, it, it wasn't life threatening. He was, I mean, kind of. His new medication is, was a scary medication, but. Um, because I was meditating every day and you pick that mantra and you focus on it and when you have like a down moment that you're just all blah, you kind of bring back your mantra of the day and it really centered and grounded me and it made me feel like maybe my anxiety and depression and all of those things that I had for so long that I have created that in my own head and that something as simple as 10 minutes of quiet mindfulness and focusing on your breath and focusing on good words and good thoughts could change. And uh, it was beautiful. And then my 21 day challenge on gratitude was up and I have been in a funk for a week. I still put up videos every other day. I edited, I was on it, had things pre-uploaded to YouTube where I should feel amazing. And it was still like, blah, blah. Didn't feel the joy that I usually feel that accomplishment and everything felt so monotonous, you know, um, 
drop off and pick up for my kids when it should be joy. How was your day? How are you doing? It was like, oh, I have to drive to pick you guys up. You know, that's, that's hard. Um, so to combat that, I have downloaded some audiobooks. I found some daily meditations and I just started doing a little yoga every morning. And I'm talking a little. I have some kind of weird injury in my leg and I'm too stubborn to go to the doctor because most of the time I feel like they don't do anything. So uh, I know I need to go now because it's been way too long. This right leg, it started out where I felt like I twisted a muscle or something and I'd step down on it the wrong way. It would shoot pain up my leg and that was the same time I got this awful blister slash corn between my toes. I know, here's an age thing happening. But I think because of the pain in my leg, I was walking differently. I was doing things. Your body overcompensates. And it's been one thing after another. And why I I still can't really lay on this side when I go to sleep, I can start to feel the tinge of pain. It's been over six months. So yes, I know. I need to go to the doctor and I will. But I was doing yoga today and I literally just found easy 10 minute yoga um, on YouTube and started with that. Something small, 10 minutes, not an hour, because that's usually how I am. I'm like going full hard. I'm gonna run 10 miles and then I can't walk for days. So five to 10 minutes of meditation instead of hours of it, 10 minutes of yoga. And when I realized I was in downward facing dog and I could not get my left heel all the way onto the ground, even in a modification, so my right, yeah, left, it's the left side. My right foot, I can go all the way down and get that heel down. The left side, I still can't. Modifications, anything. So I know there's something going on, a lot of tightness, all that. So, you know, all those things, your mental well-being affects all this physical well-being. And I feel like there are YouTubers that talk about <clears throat> their anxiety and depression and, and they make they're monetized off of it essentially and we all relate to it but I feel like so much of it is glorified and I really hope that for me as someone who struggled it with it my whole life gotten enough in my own head that I black sheep myself think people don't want to be around me I don't want to be around myself um, all of those kind of things that if 10 minutes of meditation could help kind of sometimes look at some of these other creators like man you guys got money you have millions of subscribers you can't tell me you haven't discovered some of these keys yet if I can google search it but this is kind of full circle about say the beauty community something much bigger than my own personal struggle and friendships and all of those things the recent thing that had happened I don't know if you're aware that Tati and James Charles had become friends and then something went down with vitamins because Tati has Halo and James Charles <clears throat> did some kind of a sponsorship or claimed it wasn't a sponsorship but used the hashtag ad in the campaign for sugar bear hair. And, you know, it kind of took everybody by storm and they were like, oh my gosh. Sometimes when you're in these little spaces, people don't think about other people's feelings and also it's it's such a it can be such a selfish little world that we live in within our YouTube space I mean I'm very small and I can't understand not being supportive of other creators because they can make or break you a another creator doing a shout out for me can mean so much and you do it because you actually enjoy someone, but I think it's kind of sad. But I also look at someone as young as James Charles who doesn't really understand what friendships truly are. He's made a lot of these friends while he's been a very influential person who has money. It'd be different if he was young and broke and you struggle through with your friends who are also young and broke. Just, I thought it was sad. <clears throat> Sad for both parties. Sad because uh, people ripped Tati apart for being emotional and saying how she felt and betrayed. And on the other end, James Charles because he's not aware of other people and 
how the things that he does, even a sponsorship or whatever, affects others. And I know that that's something that through so many years in my life, it's taken me to think about the things that I say before I say them. Or after I say them, like, oh, I should probably think about that before I put it out there, who I could be hurting with this kind of thing. I know within this small little community, sometimes I get down too because I'll put up videos and I won't see some of my favorite, you know, other creator friends in my comments. And then I have to think, well, when's the last time I've commented on their videos? Am I being proactive in their YouTube journey as well? And if I don't actually enjoy their content, then why am I worried about it? Again, sometimes I think, well, is this, if I am supporting someone because I truly want to support them, or am I supporting because I want to get their support back? If the answer is that I want support back, then I really need to question my motives. If, um, and I think that goes along the way for everyone. Same thing for someone like Tati. If she's supporting James because she believes in him or if she wants support back. Yes, we all want support back, but if a relationship starts to feel toxic in any which way, first thing I am finding I have to do is hold up the mirror and see if I have had anything to do with that. And then if it's not, then I need to let that, that person, that relationship, that YouTube relationship or human interaction, I need to let that go. Because I put enough in here. I don't need anybody else to put more in there. Are you guys going through anything similar? First, I thought it was the weather change. Okay, let's be honest. It has been raining through, off and on through SoCal for a long time and I love it. And then we had a couple hot days and the minute it got murky again, I wanted it to be murky. I was like, meh. But I really feel like I feel good today. Today, meditation, a little, little bit of yoga. I mean, awkward, quiet yoga, but did it. And then I wanted to sit down and I wanted to film and throw on a mask, which is now time to wash off. But um, it feels a little different. And I'm curious if any of you are going through that kind of phase in your life right now. Um, are you angry a lot? Are you frustrated? Are you just me? Because I feel like me is worse than anything because if I'm angry, I know why I'm angry. If I'm sad, I usually know why. When I'm just meh, M-E-H, meh, I don't always know why. And I've been thinking a lot about purpose. What do I want? What do I want? And sometimes what I want is a feeling, not that I actually want something. You want to do well on YouTube or do you want to feel good when you're creating or putting it out there? Uh, and in, in always in my job, like I have to amp myself up and once I'm there, I'm good and I'm bubbly. But if I don't amp myself up, I'll have a terrible work experience. And that's, that's who I am. And I know that's something I have to work on. I'm going to leave the 10 minute yoga that I did this morning down below. I'm also going to leave the link for the podcast that I'm listening to every morning. It's called um, Mind, Mindful Breath, Morning Breath. It's Deepak. So he does a little podcast, six minutes of your day. And every Friday they do a meditation. And um, I'll also leave the other book I'm reading called The Power, which is from The Secret. I'm listening to it on Audible and it's good, but it's constant work. I can't just do it once. I have to like listen every day, remind myself, get amped up and, but it's been five to 10 minutes. So I'm gonna rinse my face, I'll come back and we will close this conversation. OMG, this little yeah. microfiber, whatever wonderfulness this is. I mean, it just wiped that mask right off. There's, oh, let's get it out of the hair. There's no pull. You know how sometimes when you put on a clay mask, there's a, like a lot of pull, hard to get off, not at all. I left this one on too long too. You're, it's supposed to be a hydrating clay mask. And my little bumps are, oh, they went down a little bit. That's nice. Maybe there's magic in this bottle. I don't know. But these little things, amazing. 
Uh, does anyone know where I can get these like cheaper? Because I'm pretty sure these are like $12 on the website. And you are supposed to use it like once a day. Something like that. A little too bougie for me. Uh, this mask is nice. I like this. I like this. Um, if I was walking down <clears throat> an aisle in Target and saw like a $30 mask, would I buy it? I'd be like, no, you're at Target. But because it's Jouer, it's nice. I'm going to wash this out. The, the little tools and all that it comes with it, very good. And you know, when I bought this set, I think it was originally $89 for the set. And I got it for $60. And it came with the mask, the little wipey do and the full-size lip scrub and the full-size overnight lip mask. I've said it before, I'll say it again. The lip scrub is one of the best I've ever used. Jeffree Stars are, are um, bigger molecules, bigger molecules, like I'm all smart or something. It's got a bigger seed in it. Grains, whatever. I'm gonna do this until you get what I'm saying. But the Jouer ones are very, very small, so it's like you're not gonna get any of those micro rips in your skin from it and I'm excited to try the vanilla because the rose is like mm, rose but I don't want to eat roses but I'd like to eat vanillas vanilla you know what I mean the overnight lip mask reminds me a little bit of the cream from I think it's bite beauty the overnight lip mask but it's a little bit creamier I wouldn't say it's my all-time favorite night lip mask, but I definitely really, really like the scrub. So I will leave the overall little kit in the description box if you're interested. And I always use CZ 15 off. That's the owner, Christina Jouet. Christina Z Zilliger. I don't know. Christina, the founder. I use her code because... I don't know, a lot of the influencers, I'm like, eh, you get all the Morphe money, you don't need the Jouer money too. So, um, in conclusion, we are now done with the masking portion. How does my face feel? I just picked up the mask stuff, it's everywhere. I have a terrible fake tan on. I don't know how people get the fake tans going. If I figure it out, I'll do a video. Uh, at this point, I can do a video on what not to do with your fake tan. But my fin, my fin, my skin feels really good. It feels nice, it feels soft. I like this. Anyway, if you guys have any self-care things that you do for your brain, or any YouTube advice, or any of those things along those lines, leave them in the comments down below. I read every comment. I read them all. I comment as often as I can if it's like something to comment back on. But I love having conversations with you guys. I may agree, I may not agree, but I do enjoy it. And you guys have become a beautiful part of my life. And every day I'm thankful for this journey that I get to share with whoever clicks play on my videos. And I'm thankful for that. That's something I'm grateful for. So. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope this doesn't have like a sad feeling to it. It's just kind of how I've been feeling lately and what I'm doing to try to battle it out instead of my old self who would just be and just live in it for a while. I would just live in it until something good would happen and then I'd kind of live off that. And now I want to live in the good, good, as much as humanly possible and be happy, authentically happy for other people and that joy. So as always guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Mwah. Bye. I like the mask by the way. Don't forget you can subscribe down here and for more videos, click over here, possibly there. There's places to click, click them, click them all.